Wrestling, an ancient pastime of extreme dedication, willpower, and physical capacity, is considered by many as one of the most mentally and physically taxing sports in existence. It is one of the few sports which can be traced back to the very beginnings of recorded history. Cave drawings in France, which are allegedly 15,000 years old, serve as a benchmark of how deeply rooted wrestling is in human culture. More recent exposure of the sport can be traced back to around 704 BC, ancient Greece, where wrestling played a prominent role in legend and literature. The sport of wrestling is described in written works of the time, such as the Iliad and Odyssey. The sport is also depicted on a variety of objects from the time, such as vases, sculptures, and bullion coins. In ancient Greece, wrestling was highly competitive and ruthless, so much so that it was the number one sport of the Olympic Games. This great fascination of the sport, however, was not only limited to the Greeks. The allure of wrestling manifested itself in other notable cultures, such as that of Iran, India, Japan, and China. Although the rules of wrestling varied slightly in each culture, all shared one common goal, to win at all costs. Competitors of the time took every possible precaution and procedure in order to come out on top. According to legend, the ancient Greeks would consume animal testicles before a match in order to get an edge over their opponent. Although the practice might sound ridiculous and is no longer used, wrestlers today are known to partake in equally ridiculous or even more absurd practices to help them win. One technique used by a majority of wrestlers in order to gain an advantage is cutting weight, which essentially involves self-starvation, dehydration, and endless amounts of exercise. Partaking in such bizarre and outlandish practices to succeed is not an anomaly in wrestling, but rather the normality. The notion of doing everything possible to succeed is deeply rooted into the culture of the sport and is what defines wrestling at its very essence. A wrestling match typically consists of three two-minute periods during which not one ounce of energy can be spared. In order to win, one must exert 100% of their effort and maintain that extreme level of intensity for a full six minutes. Six minutes might not sound like much, but even the most conditioned, physically fit wrestler would undoubtedly be exhausted by the end of this relatively minute period of time. From the second that first whistle is blown, an incredible burst of adrenaline flows through one's body and a long-awaited and prepared-for battle begins. One's heart begins to race, blood begins to rush, and senses become keen to everything around them. Wrestling relies on complete and total manipulation of all the senses in order to dominate one's opponent. One needs to be able to see the fear in their opponent's eyes, hear his arising distress, feel his next move, and smell the victory that is only two shoulder blades on the mat away. The moment that first whistle is wrong, there is no more time to think, only act. However, being able to succeed in the sport of wrestling is not only restricted to what one is able to accomplish on the mat, but rather off it as well. A wrestler can train his entire life under the most highly regarded strength training coaches available, yet still succumb to an opponent who will never say, I can't. If even the slightest sign of weakness is exposed to a capable opponent, defeat is inevitable. This delicate balance of power and willpower is unprecedented in any other sport. A strong, robust willpower must be built up and strengthened to its maximal potential in order to succeed. This essential quality is not only important on the mat, but rather off it as well. A truly determined wrestler will modify nearly every aspect of his life, including his diet, in order to gain even the slightest advantage. This self-control displayed off the mat is what separates a good wrestler from a great wrestler. The act of cutting or shedding weight is a practice widely used by the wrestling community off the mat in order to gain an advantage on the mat. In order to compete in a wrestling match, one chooses a weight class where the individual believes they perform their best. Many times, this chosen weight class is much lower than the wrestler's natural weight. This relatively bizarre practice is used in order to give the wrestler a strength advantage over the supposedly smaller opponent. Cutting weight is an intense process that brings a wrestler down to his or her desired weight class. It is generally done using different forms of dehydration that push the body to its physical and mental limits. The different forms of cutting weight include, but are not limited to, using rubber suits, exercising in saunas, taking diuretics, and simply not eating or drinking for days. Using these extreme methods of weight loss are not an unusual occurrence among wrestlers, although an undoubtedly dangerous one. Billy Saylor, Joseph LaRosa, and Jeff Reese all have one thing in common. They are all dead now. All three of them engaged in these extreme weight loss practices in order to qualify for the respective weight classes and are no longer with us now as a result of severe dehydration. Their deaths are an extreme example of the extent that wrestlers will push themselves to in the name of winning. And although a tragic incident, the passing of these three wrestlers helped put new rules and regulations in place that are currently helping to prevent such a tragic incident from ever occurring again. 
Personally, wrestling and the culture that follows it has made me the person I am today. I will never look at a task and deem it too long or difficult to complete. Wrestling has taught me that if I put my mind to do something, my body will follow. Mind over matter. That is the most important lesson wrestling has ever taught me and that I've ever learned. I now know that I am capable of doing anything and everything it takes to succeed, whether that be starving myself for days or exercising in a sauna while wearing a rubber suit. It is only a matter of willpower. As Henry Ford once said, if you think you can do it, or you think you can't do it, you are right.